Okay, now if we go back to Remix and we've got our contract here, let's delete this. And we're gonna start building this out to actually what we're trying to do here. What I want is a kind of perpetual vault which people can deposit ETH into. That'll be swapped for a liquid staking token. In this example, we're gonna be using Lido Finance's ST ETH. Uh, liquid staking tokens are a representative of a state deferring position. So we're going to swap one ETH for an amount of ST ETH, and then we're going to get back kind of a 5% a return per year on that because we're providing Ethereum to the consensus algorithm, which earns rewards. Uh, recently, Ethereum migrated from a proof of work network to a proof of stake network. And essentially the people that provide the consensus or to decide on the correct blocks are the people that own the tokens. So we can get this return based on our holdings. We're going to then use the, that return to distribute that to a charity. So the collateral will stay in a smart contract and then the 5% a year will perpetually be given to a charity contract address. The charity that I've chosen to do this for is GiveWell. They're an effective altruism charity and they have an Ethereum address listed on their website right here. Let's go ahead and copy that into Remix and I'm going to change this to address because I don't want a string, I want a, um, a contract address here. And I'm going to call this charity. I'm going to try and uh, create this contract as permissionless as possible, so I'm not going to use many owner only functions, but there will be some functions which come down to this address. In fact, I'm actually going to change this to start with so that I can test it so that it's my own address. I will change it back before we deploy to mainnet. So that's my address and this is give well. Let's save that. I also want to make this public so that it's transparent and open on the blockchain so that anyone can see that when they're interacting with this contract that they can like who owns the funds. And there's kind of no way for me, once I've deployed this contract, the only person that's going to have permission is this charity address. The owner of the contract or the developer is kind of deploying it into the world. And then that is kind of immutable on the blockchain forever. They can no longer change it or kind of rug pull the contract. I'm going to go in and grab an interface. This is something I've worked with Lido before. So I'm going to be using interface.ilido. I'm going to be pasting this into Remix. An interface is kind of like an instruction set and almost like a little bit like an ABI, but it's uh, used within Solidity to interact with a third party protocol. So Lido is a kind of a completely separate protocol that we're going to use to connect to their smart contract from within our smart, smart contracts. So we're going to build on top of what they're doing. They're the ones that provide the liquid staking token, and this is for the ERC20. So we also need to import a library here which is this one. Open Zeppelin libraries are really useful. They're a great way to create tokens and do different things from within Solidity. Um, the, the code is audited a lot of the time and it's very reliable and very easy to understand and well-written code that you can kind of import. And you can see this is expanding on the standard ERC20 token library. So we've got all the kind of the ERC20 um, token functions here like transfer, balance of and whatnot. And then we're expanding that with submit, withdraw, these kind of Lido SDE specific functions. We're then going to add a second address, which is the STE um, contract address. And I can get this from the Lido docs. Go down to deployed contracts, and then we want Gorelli, Pratis Testnet, Lido and STE token. This one, that should do us fine. Next thing I'm going to do is add a deposit function. And this is a payable function, which means you can send it Ethereum or Ether. And then it's a public function, means anyone can call it internally or externally. And I'm going to have a iLido, which is this interface we got here. The Lido address, which is the STE address and then submit, which is this function here. The value that we've been sent in the transaction itself. And for the referrer, I don't think that's really applicable, but we're just gonna use this contract address for that in case there's any kind of referral fees that come back, they can be stored in the contract itself. The other thing we want to do is kind of calculate how much ETH has been deposited already. 
So let's put that in at the top. We're going to go a uint variable, which is an unsigned integer, and we're going to call this public donated equals zero. I don't need to do public donated. I'll be set to zero as standard. And then we're going to do donated plus equals message dot value. So message dot value is the amount of ETH that's been uh, sent to the contract. One thing to note is that the um, the message dot value figure will be have 18 decimals. So it's going to be a really big number. Even if you send like 0 0.00001 Ethereum, it's kind of it's going to use that 18 decimals. It could be a whole number. Let's clean that up. Make sure the contract compiles. And so far we're looking good. The next thing we want to do is create a withdrawal function. So withdraw public. Anyone can call this, but obviously the only person that can actually go to is the charity. And what we want to do is we want to work out the, um, the difference between the, the current balance of the, the STE state tokens, any amount deposited, that kind of surplus will be withdrawable um, and that'll be sent to the uh, charity address. So let's get the balance first. Uint balance equals ilodo.balance of address this. So we're getting the balance of the, co the contract itself uh, using a standard. This is a ERC20 standard function. There's lots of documentation about that on OpenZeppelin's website if you're not familiar with the ERC20 token contract. It's something you'll be using a lot, so it's definitely worth having a look at that and the NFT contracts to familiarize yourself with those external functions. I'm going to do UN surplus equals balance minus donated. And then we're gonna put a require statement in here. We're gonna basically require that the surplus is greater than zero. Otherwise, we're gonna put nothing to return. And then we could actually withdraw from Lido itself, but the problem is that Lido uh, SD token isn't actually withdrawable currently, so there's no way of testing that. So I'm gonna actually transfer the assets as STE to the um, charity address and they'll be able to figure out what to do with it from there. They can either swap them on Uniswap or Curve or they can, once the um, withdrawal goes live, then they can access them that way. So we're gonna do transfer. So we're gonna, the recipient is gonna be the charity and the amount is gonna be the surplus. And there we go. The final thing I want to do is add a function so that the charity themselves can update their wallet address. If they kind of want to change wallets, then they have the ability to upgrade this contract if it ever became popular and kind of update their wallet if they were moving over to a multi-sig or kind of a hardware wallet or something more safe. So let's do function update wallet. There's gonna be a public function as well. And we're going to require that message.sender equals charity. And then finally, we're just going to put charity equals message.sender. Actually, that's pretty useless because it won't update. So we need to put a new address in here. Address new address and we're going to pass in a value here charity equals new address so the to update the wallet the message or sender has to be the charity but they're passing in a new address and that would be updated to this charity value here and that'd be publicly viewable by everyone using a simple block explorer like uh, etherscan Okay, so a fairly straightforward smart contract here. You can see how it's working. It's untested at the moment. We're gonna go through testing later before we deploy to mainnet. But to start with, we're just gonna deploy this to the Grelly testnet so that we can interact with it and build our front end on top of this to create a nice little kind of decentralized application which can be used to send funds to this kind of perpetual vault and then donate them to charity.
and confirm that transaction. If for any reason you have a little X here, it means there's a problem in your contract. I'll make all this code open source on the GitHub repository as well, which will be linked to in the description. But we've got our Gift Forever contract here. So we're gonna have a new contract address. And I'm gonna update this in the React application. And we're gonna have a new ABI as well, because a lot of the functions have changed and the, the instruction set we need is different. So let's go to the compile page in Remix and copy that ABI. And we're just gonna paste this into the Gift Forever ABI. You can see there's quite a lot more here now. Now that's set up, let's go back to the front end, do some work there to build this application out. 